Welcome LEGO fans to another LEGO The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey review here on Bobo Brico 9's channel. I'm your wise host, Bobo Brico 9, and today we'll be going far over the misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old to visit the exorbitantly fat, gluttonous, and ugly goblin king in his nasty, despicable lair. So let's go ahead and take a look at this awesome set. All right, so here we are in the LEGO review, and right now you have a nice view of the Goblin King's back hair <laughs> and loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> and Ooh. as you can hear, we have our favorite guest stars, Andrew19, Andrew30. Hi. And Fan with the seconds. The... <laughs> so, today we have for you the largest of the Hobbit sets, uh, the Goblin King Battle. Now, this is a bit of a controversial set, but we'll get to that later. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and show you the set. But before that, we have to show you the minifigures. And before that, we have to give you the specifics. So I will go ahead and give you the set number, and then Andrew will give you the rest of it. So of course, this is the Goblin King Battle. And it is set 79010. And tell me what things I need. Oh, um, let's see. The pieces, number of pieces. OK, number of pieces is 841. And the, I'm just saying the ones I, um, the price is $99.99. And, and the recommended ages. 9 to 14, but who cares? Yeah, no one cares. All right, so as you can see, Fanor gave us a very nice display here with Gandalf's Brickforge staff. So that is about it for our intro. Any preliminary thoughts? Well, I... I do really think it's cool that um, Vicarpedia actually tells you what day it came out on some of them. December 1st? December 1st, yeah. Although you can't really trust Wikipedia on Brickipedia. Brickipedia. Oh, Brickipedia. Uh -huh. I heard Wikipedia, so I'm like, It's yeah. Brickipedia. But in my like, reviews, I try to do as much as possible when it actually yeah. tells you what day. I tell you what day. And, uh, well... Oh, one more thing. Uh, could you get the uh, price, the approximate price per piece? Um. Well, there's only one thing you're gonna have to memorize. It was hundred dollars. Hundred dollars and eight hundred. Wait, eight, I can Eight hundred forty-one. Okay, so that's not great for price per piece. Um. Actually, Andrew's gonna get the exact price per piece for us real quick. Um. It was hard memorizing that, but it is eleven point eight eight nine four one seven cents per piece. And if you do this, it's eleven point eight eight nine four one seven three six zero two eight five four cents. Okay. <laughs> so approximately okay. twelve cents per brick, uh -huh. or uh, eleven between eleven and twelve. So that's not too bad, but we like ten cents per piece or lower. But that's very rare. So we'll be back in just a moment to show you the awesome minifigures that come in this set. All right, so we have everybody lined up here in a row in order of excitingness. And of course, as we see Gandalf a lot, we'll do him first. And, and he is shaking. We'll go from left to right, so I'll do Gandalf <laughs> again. So here is Gandalf. Now, normally he would come with the boring staff that you have seen so many times, but we just went ahead and gave him his epic Brickforge staff right here. And I've told you in many reviews how to get that, so I'm not going to bother this time. And this is the only set that I know of that he comes with Glandring, his sword. That's a standard sword. It's a standard sword, but it is Glandring. It, right? it, it shouldn't say Glandring. Does it say Glandring? Does it say that it comes with Glandring? I don't think so. Then don't call it Glandring. <laughs> Call it a standard sword. So I know the second is very uh, detail-oriented. Picky. There's that hat again, and hopefully, it, yes, came off nice and easy that time. Yeah, impossible. The impossible beards of Gandalf and Gimli. There's his head, which is not double-sided. Standard gray beard for old guys. <laughs> uh, gray cape. Printing on the front. And, of course, printing on the back. So, Andrew will continue and show you the first goblin soldier. Oh, uh, you just wanted me to get this guy, didn't you? <laughs> hey, he's more hey, excited than Gandalf. You could have done Gandalf. I mean, which is okay. more exciting? Well, okay, here's a goblin. Um, normal Wait. goblin. Um, Hang on. What? 
Queen. Just there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, goblin head hair or whatever. <laughs> um, I, I I can. Yeah. Do it. Okay. Yep. Um, here is. Here is the head. With double sided, I believe. Yep, double sided. Very similar once again, but there is a difference if you look very closely. And here is the um, this this um cool pointed sword. I believe um, is this in the Mines of Moria? Yes, it is. Because I remember doing from my that, Mines that, of Moria that review. That sword has been around for yeah, a very, very long, long time. time. I'm not I'm not that much of a Lego. I mean, I'm a Lego person, but I'm not into the history of Lego. So there is the body. I believe they all have different bodies, but I'm not sure. And there's the back side. And yay, painted legs! Printed. We all know we love painted legs. Printed legs. Okay, printed. So I believe that's it for the first nine and goblin. Nine and second, they're looking at me funny for saying that. <laughs> okay, and this is the second goblin. It is different. Uh, the torso. I'll yeah. It, this yes, it is. Um, I think that was actually a smart move by Lego to yes. do different yeah. torsos because none of the goblins were the same at all. Ah. Although the heads are the same so that we get the ear, it's kind of like a hat, basically. Yeah, a hat. <laughs> it's a hat with ears. And then <laughs> That's creepy. Here's his axe with a bone shaft. And I believe shaft. That, that's from that's from Attack of the Wars too, right? Yes, but it has a bronze hilt, I believe, in that suit. So. Ah, uh, yes, it does. And then there's his face and torso printing. Uh, the difference here is the basic uh, brown straps and everything, and that little gold or bronze tooth. Yeah. And then the back printing. And the other head. And there's more difference between the heads here. Here he's full teeth, and that one he's more covering up a lot of his teeth. And then we have his leg printing. So. Alright. Next we have our goblin scribe. And once again, he's different in the torso. So, I'll show it to you later. <laughs> and he also is um shorter than all the other ones, correct? Yes. So, same head, same hair, but we do have different torso printing. It looks like he has belly acne. <laughs> which is kind of oh, gross. That's pleasant. <laughs> and he has... The he door. He has door. back acne, too, which I like to call back acne. <laughs> and I know that's really disgusting, and I probably just turned some of you off. Uh, back at knee. As back in act. back, back, and then your knee. Oh, <laughs> how clever. Uh, and he does come with this uh, scroll, I guess you would call um, it. That is a he, sticker. Write, he writes it in the movie, correct? Yes. He writes yes. in it to He's alert not the pale orc. Right. And he does, it, he does not come with a writing utensil. I just give him a bone. I guess he can write with a bone yeah. to make it look like that. So, And that is a sticker, unfortunately. But, you know, can't have everything. Unfortunately. So, Andrew1983 will show you Dory. Yes, finally Dory. Uh, oh, That's Ori. Ori. <laughs> I'm not that good with dwarf names. Well, sort of, but... Okay, so here is Dory has this whip... Thingy. Flail. Okay, flail. That is probably my favorite dwarf weapon. Ah, uh, okay. It, it's the most unique, other than perhaps Ori's. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, okay. So here's the hair again. Very cool hair for um to the movie, the actual yes, movie. It looks like a lot. That you fan or... Yes. Very, very detailed hair. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that is cool. Okay, so done with that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so here is um, Dory's um, head. That's and his unexpected gathering face, and yeah. that is his Goblin King battle face. <laughs> Though he does not come in an unexpected gathering. But you can put him in there. Yes, I understand that. And me and Bilberg09 have the opportunity to do that since we do have both that yeah, set we did and... We an unexpected gathering review, actually. Uh -huh. um, so we got the cake and... Normal boring. sword or very boring sword. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Feynor. <laughs> okay, so 
Here is his body. Very nice. If yeah. you look very closely, if you you can kind of catch it in the light there. You can see some very nice gold patterns. So yeah. Tilt, tilt it back. Yeah. I think you can see it. I can yeah. see it on there. Mm -hmm. And then okay. on the back. Yeah, you can definitely see it there on the back. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, done with that. <laughs> Ant, normal, boring, dwarf legs. Yep. Alright, so, um... Fanor, you go ahead and show Nori. <clears throat> okay, first off, I want to go to the weapons. Now this, I am not positive as to whether or not Nori has a sword. If he does, please tell us in the comments. Yeah, I think he... I, oh, I in the movie. I do not believe that he does. In, in the, the movie? movie? I know he does in the set. In the set, he definitely does, but I'm not sure about the movie. And what do you call that? A club? A mace? This is actually <laughs> a staff, and this is the best that LEGO could do, so I will give them that. It's a very good representation for what they had. Um, it's not my favorite representation, but since they didn't really feel like making a new molded piece, which would have been nice, that's a very good uh, weapon for his fighting staff. I'd say that's in my top five favorite dwarf weapons. <sighs> top ten. I, yeah. yeah, top ten, For me, of too. Yeah. I just, for me, I don't think dwarf weapons are that interesting. Some of them are. Amazing. And this is Nori's hairpiece. That's my. Yeah, that might that. be my favorite dwarf hairpiece right there. Well, his hairpiece again, very um, authentic to the movie. Yes. Is a little bit different because he actually has a tri mohawk and a tri beard, uh -huh. and it also splits in. Like I think this part comes over here somehow, etc. So it's a very complicated beard and hair style. And then here's the minifigure himself. Uh, this is... I wanna... Yeah. Little um, braids from his... To have that focus there his hair. Yeah. So, there to give you the comparison, it comes down from that little jutting out thing right there. And stuff. And then he has Wait, some very you nice... the other face? Show the... I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. He has some very nice torso printing. Um, it too has a little bit of detail um, on the back. And there's yeah, his good. there's his other face, which is angry. There he's happy. And then dwarf legs. Excuse me. What should I do with my plate? Eat it, Ori. But that's all like green food. Where's the meat? <laughs> now, who does not like Ori? Well, hmm? I, I wasn't going to say that. I was just saying that Bill Burkham and I didn't know the second think I am most like Ori out of all the other dwarves. Yeah, Ori is pretty awesome. He's the youngest of the dwarves, and yet he's over 100 years old, correct? <laughs> yes. And he uh, actually, you know what? In the Ori by Ori is seen in the Fellowship of the Ring when Gandalf reads in the book. The Book of Mazarbul, is that correct? Yes. Um, Ori actually wrote that book. Yeah, I, my favorite scene in Misty Mountain Song is Ori with his book. And apparently that is actually the book that Misty is that. Mountains. The Book of Mazarbul. When they sing the song. song. Yeah. I showed you that. Oh, oh, very, right, very right. close. I'm like, wait, what? But anyway, on to the main figure. He has a fairly nice hairpiece, too. I, that might be exclusive, but I'm not sure. Do you know Fanor? Oh, uh, no, it's not. It's uh, not. That appears on Ron Weasley and oh. early Harry Potter sets. Oh. And a few other main figures, of course. Probably in a different color, right? Yes, it's orange hair. Yeah. So, overall, a uh, fairly nice hairpiece. And, of course, here is his unexpected gathering phase. He's all smiley. That's probably when you're singing, put the knives, bend the forks, smash the, the bottles and burn the corks, chip the glasses and crack the plates. That's what Bilbo Baggins hates. And Wayne looks very funny in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Goblin King Battle for sure. Now, here's some controversy right here. I have never seen Ori with an axe in the movie. I've seen it a few times. Have you? No. I don't look that closely to Ori. Because, obviously, Ori's most iconic weapon is his slingshot. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. we do get his slingshot, but printed on the torso. 
I, I figured. Uh, well, wait. Let me finish right. the story. Yeah, you go ahead with your theory. First story. I'll tell mine. Now I figured, okay, uh, Lego does not want to make a slingshot. <laughs> well, then along came the Lone Ranger theme, and we actually got a slingshot. Now it, uh, I'll admit it looks terrible. It's um, okay. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't it's have any Lone Ranger sets at all. So. I don't know either, but I saw it. It's basically one of these tiles with a slingshot printed on it. It looks really cheesy, but um, it would have been better than nothing, I suppose. No, no, it wouldn't have been. No, yeah. because I would have been way too hard to set up and everything. True. So, um, whoops. Ooh. Lego should have made a slingshot that looked accurate. Here, here's what I think. Uh, I think that they were thinking, well, you can't really do a slingshot with a minifigure because the hand, the arms, I should say, can only go up. They can't bend to pull the slingshot back or anything. But you can't do that for a bow and arrow either. Yeah, but so. they can't really... They could have had a slingshot piece where he was holding it, but they just decided yeah. not to. And now Andrew Nietzsche, Andrew Three gets the honor of showing his ugliness. The, the Great Goblin, Goblin. Kid. <laughs> Incorrect name. Great Goblin is yeah, the correct name. Yeah, that's the from the Hobbit, the book. Exactly. Okay, there. I I I haven't been reading Lord of the Rings, but I have been reading the Hobbit. I'm to Mirkwood, and I look forward to the desolation of Small. So. It doesn't. <laughs> okay. Doesn't look forward to. Oh. Uh, uh, okay, so here is the staff, the Golly King staff. I don't know what you call that, so yeah. we'll just call it staff. It's Shy opens a up scepter. Or, okay, so obviously guys. here is his um, arm, which connects. Does this thing come out or not? I don't believe so, but then his uh, hand also comes off. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the blue piece there does come off. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that's connected. Very similar yeah. to the design for the cave troll. Yep. Very, very similar. And the same thing for the other arm. Should I do show that or? No, that's okay. Uh, uh, just these three pieces here do come off right here. Those are just standard black teeth. <coughs> and then there's a couple studs on the top here so that someone can come up here and <coughs> bang the heck out of his very small brain. <laughs> I didn't notice that. His back hair. <laughs> that, that's actually his hair that's going down. But oh, it's not really? back. Oh. Yeah, because if you look at it, it yeah. starts Oh, yeah, I guess there. so. Oh, yeah. Down. So then, very long hair. One more thing. Not only can he grip a weapon, but he can also grip a minifigure or a dwarf. But a dwarf is a minifigure. Yeah. Dwarf minifigure. <laughs> and swing him around, eat him, whatever he feels like doing. And the bulge, you want to see, show them the bulge his on his... quadruple chin. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the minifigures. The skin beard. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back in just a moment with the actual set. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get on to the actual set. Now before we go, go ahead and start showing you, as you can see it comes in four main sections. Two which are fairly small and two which are fairly large. And there's no way to actually connect these. Um, you can make it look like they're connected and we will show you that later. But you cannot actually connect them. And a lot of people do not like that. Including me. I don't really have a problem with it. Um, I guess it's a little bit annoying. But it probably would have fallen apart anyway, even if you did connect it with the pins. I love having to... I love having them compact. Yeah, compact them. that's true. It doesn't really bother me that much, but I know it did bother a lot of people. But I, I think that it kind of depends on whether you're going to create several scenes for Goblin Town, as it's called, or if you're just going to have it one way. If you're going to have it one way, then I can understand why you would want everything to fit together. But otherwise, it would be too difficult. And this yeah. is created so that way you could put it in endless combinations. All right, so here's the smallest section. Uh, nothing much here. We do get this nice torch piece. Do you want to compare it to an Actually, you know what? Or um, you know what? This part came by itself. Yes, it did. 
I just so up there for that did not go on there. So that just kind of you can just kind of lay that around whatever. Okay, so here's the smaller section. Got some nice skulls and bones, and a nice spear here as well. Basic brown spear. And the most exciting thing here is you can spin this wheel, but even that is not very exciting. You get you annoyed. <laughs> or um, many figures, I should say. And it falls off very easily because it's only connected by a skeleton's foot. And <laughs> those are very flimsy. Un... <laughs> no, those are very skeletal. An excellent observation, Fanmore. <laughs> Oh, a genius! Thank oh, you. One, I know I am. One more thing here. That is not printed. That is a sticker, I believe. Me too. Yeah, oh, yeah no. it's a sticker. Yeah, almost all of this is print, uh, sticker. That is terrible. I know it is. You'll live. We should be able to go for that. Now here we do have some nice steps, because this is supposed to lead up to right here in the setup you're supposed to do, but of course you can change it if you like. The most exciting thing here, of course, is the catapult. I will demonstrate real quick. Without hitting Fane with the second in the head. Wait. Face. Face. And we'll see that very well. Here, this a little better. And we got one more rock. The attack of the war sub catapult is much better. Yeah. Uh, Alright, you know how it works. And if you want to, well, it doesn't really come off very easily, unfortunately. But you could if you wanted. So other than that, just some more bones and stuff. Some stickers to make it look like there's treasure and ugliness everywhere. But nothing much exciting there. Do you want to compare it to a minifigure in the Goblin King? Just so that oh, for size comparison? Yeah, just so that way they okay, can see yeah, like, what it would like. Okay. So there's the Goblin King. He kind of... Dwarfs everything and then. Ori. There's. Well, it's a fairly nice size. Mm -hmm. And then a regular size mini figure. Alright. So we'll go ahead and move on to the throne piece, which Feanor will talk about for the most part. Okay. Since this is a lot of stuff, I'm going to start with the throne. <coughs> Since it's the centerpiece, obviously. Um, I don't know about the lighting, so I'm going to tilt it a little bit towards the light. Uh, there's a very nice sticker um, on the back. Very detailed for a sticker. You don't normally see that kind of detail. Uh, and that's on the back of the throne. Up here we have a burp. Um, more stickers. And it's kind of an overhanging of it. Now this piece right back here, that is a large burp, and for those of you who don't know what that means and think it sounds disgusting, that stands for Big Ugly Rock Piece. Yep. Random okay. Skull. Well, Heard we, that many times. We are going to start with this side and then move around now. So here we have a nice torch, um, obviously the burp, some stickers here, spear, a bone because Goblin Town is just put together out of anything. And I know that with some of these pieces, that's a regular you can take it out. You can't take this out or anything. What do you mean take it out? Like I've seen like, some where you can actually detach part of it and put uh, a minifigure inside. No, okay. Just wondering. <coughs> Here we have a skull and a fang, and then we have a random fang just kind of laying around. Yeah, okay. I just kind of threw those around. Mm -hmm. Those are all extra parts. And then here we have some weapons. The first looks like a pitchfork. Me, I it think it's a not. It is a trident. No. I'm using my imagination. <laughs> That's what life is about. <laughs> this can become a trident if you use King Trident's <laughs> King Trident's pitchfork. <laughs> oh goodness me, that's <laughs> your And then there is the spear. And this is this is a flail. Yeah. Uh, actually, Dory's weapon is called bolas because it's hmm. supposed to have three separate. Flails. That's right. I remember that now. It does have three. And then you also get a small bucket and a golden cup, and then some more randomly thrown about things. 
And then did, does this go here? Yeah. Okay. Somewhere around there anyway. Because it wasn't on there, so I wasn't sure. I love King Triton's pitchfork. <laughs> and then we have this nice torch. Um, not a typical torch design. No. They decided to make it a little bit bigger, which I think is pretty nice and interesting. And then here, I am I think this is just basically like a totem pole. Because I can't yeah, think of anything else like. that describes it. Yeah. Because it's not the Goblin King's staff. That's, or scepter, that's what this is. So. And that thing right there. Oh, I'm uh, getting there, I'm getting I'm, there, I'm getting uh, there. Oh, I forgot to show you this little rotten pillow. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> to me, it looks like a biohazard symbol. Yeah! That Isn't looks that very cool. nice? Yes, the best is. biohazard symbol ever made. And then, oh, wait, one more thing I want to point out. You get some nice sludge colored bricks right there. Sludge? What's that? Sludge. Oh. Like nasty slime. Uh, I found a secret. Yeah, I knew that was there. A secret brush. More stickers, of course, but another very nice book. It almost looks like a Bible or something. Something, I don't know. And then here we have this, and we'll let, I'm actually going to let Andrew, 19 Andrew 30, explain this part to you since I've well, been rambling on for a little while. <laughs> I've yes, you have. Basically, well, you can. You can show what it's made okay. for. I'm just, okay, I just want to say, I just wanted to say that this thing took me forever to put in the right place in my, the thing that I put together at my house. I just, I don't know if I even have this in the right place in my house. <laughs> and one thing is that in the movie, that is where they fall. Yes. Oh! But yeah. they don't fall on the side of the Goblin King's throne <laughs> in the movie, because if they did, he would probably just, like, reach over and pluck one of them to eat every once in a while or something. <laughs> no, because he still wanted to know why they were there. Yeah, they true. are civilly uncivilized, yeah. the goblins are. <laughs> they have some goodness in them, but... Really? Basically none, because they were going to kill them anyway. Doesn't it say in the book that the uh, goblins worked with the wargs? Mm -hmm. Yep, but that's uh, later on after this set. Yeah, that's in the time of the And then another function set. that happens here is you can flip Well, it didn't work so... Well, wait. Let's go ahead and put a minifigure oh, in yes, there. Oh, yeah, good idea. It's pictured with Ori, so... You know what? Starring Ori the Dwarf! We have to... Put on his... Hang on, hang on one second. Alright, so here you see Ori trapped inside. Poor Ori, but don't worry, we're gonna rescue him. Because once you pull this... It lifts up this thing, and Ori is somewhat free. <laughs> Only 37% free. Something like that. Okay, and, just and then we'll go some ahead and compare the size of this to a dwarf minifigure. So he's dwarfed by it, and then the throne is still... <laughs> very funny. <laughs> you just got that. <laughs> what? I and didn't he's get it also all. dwarfed by the... Thrown there, and then let's go ahead and compare it to the other ones. Uh, I think you're forgetting something, Feanor. I know what I'm forgetting. Uh, okay. They so are. Their minds are alike. Over and Feanor the second. I have no idea what they're and talking about. Get off here. And then we also have the Goblin King, who could just climb up there because he's actually taller than it. And then let's go ahead and show you with him on the throne. Would you like some assistance or ugliness? Which took me five minutes to actually put him on the throne. And there he is. But he's not on the throne, you gotta push him in a little oh, bit. Oh, I don't wanna push him in and then have to yank him out. And then the thing that Bilbo Bricko and I thinks that I am forgetting is... The Goblin King treasure. <clears throat> a gold piece. Make you move your... There isn't even anything in there, is there? Oh, that's right, I took those out. I'll be back in one moment. Alright, sorry, I had to buy those jewels for something else. Borrow those jewels. <laughs> buy them. You bought the jewels? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> buy them for the Goblin King himself. And so they're the nice emerald green ones. But And I'll show you how that works real fast. Yeah. Just so that you get the idea. Push this. 
and it comes out the other side. It's one of those hidden things that someone who didn't build the set might not notice. Yeah. And so that's now it for the throne. I will hand it off to Andrew nineteen Andrew thirty. I'm glad you remembered my name. To show you. Oh wait, one thing I forgot. No. I forgot to show the instruction book. Aha. Aha. So let me just get these real quick. Book one is extremely thin. You spill the dwarves, and then those two small structures. I thought you said you spilled the dwarves. You spilled the yes. dwarves, guys. Spill the dwarves. Oh. Book two, you get the throne, the Goblin King, and Gandalf. We can't forget the Screaming Kid. Book three is where you there build the, the big section is there the in the Goblins. Kid? I think there probably is. Book now, if I can find something here two? real quick. Yeah, I just saw it. Maybe I would like to two. show you something. Look at that. Back of book two. Wait, I available. want to try and show something uh, real quick. Okay. Yeah, look at this anchor piece right here. You're supposed to put it at a very odd angle. Can yeah. you guys see that? Yeah. Oh. Wait, where? Right the right anchor here. piece. Um, and it kind of falls off if you try to do it that way. So I put it my own way. I just want to point that out real quick. So, a bit, bit of an odd choice for Lego to do that, I don't know. Just want to point that out. And the, but um, the, I, I, the, the back of book two, I saw I believe when you were that Oh, yes, pages. we get a nice portrait the of the screaming kid. kid. So, Why does everybody like him again? I don't know. Because no one likes screaming him. Screaming at everybody to win? Yeah, I just, <laughs> the reason why everyone likes him is that nobody likes him. That's the logic of it. Someone like Martin Clark. That's a con- no, I'm kidding. Okay, now, this, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. since he's already pointed it out, I'm just gonna go ahead and say the anchor is to signify the just thrown together out of junk. Yeah. Okay, so this um, ladder is pretty cool. It doesn't, um, it's just, you just lay it there, and one of the functions of this part is that there's this little thing right there Pen. where if you like jab it or something, I don't know how to say it, but you can knock it off where... Yeah, and you can see how that works, this one rock piece just kind of pushes okay, it Okay, and That's then... That's a nice little secret function. Yeah. I, I don't think that I uh, would have yes. seen uh, okay. how it did it. I would have seen... And um, there is this way to knock off the, to knock off the bridge by pushing in this thing. So you just knock, completely knock the bridge off. That isn't something you have to like jab. It's just you, you press it hard and it'll come off for you. And <laughs> I don't know how to put it back on. So let's say that I really like um this yeah, like little that soldier thing that's um in the orc forge too as well. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um. And then I really love also this thing, which is basically. Wait, let me. Get, oh, yeah. Let me get the goblin scribe. It's oh, a yeah. smaller re representation of what. Yeah, the the goblin scribe when the when goblin king tells the goblin scribe to tell the pale orc of the dwarves whereabouts. Um, he. But there's no miles and miles of right. track leading out. That would've been awesome yeah. if it was. That would've been a very, very large Lego set. <laughs> <laughs> but a little bit boring for me, I think. That's okay. You can spin it 360. I mean, boring if they'd included miles and miles of track. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do that. You spin it 360, and then you use... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was bad. Wow. <laughs> Nicely done, boys. So then, that's how it moves up and down. I think that's a very clever design, actually. Yeah, me too. So who designed this, do you know? I believe Hans Henrik Sidenius. My favorite. Well, my second favorite. Oh, everyone knows their favorite, favorite is Martin Klotz. Yes, Hans Henrik is probably his second favorite. Either him or Jark Leek Madsen. Although I've never seen him in my entire life. I <laughs> I'm sure you I've have. gotten good reviews yeah. of him from Bilbrick 09. He did the wizard battle, so that's enough right there. Yeah, I. Oh my gosh, amazing! Best, best Lego LTR or Hobbit set ever. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, maybe, maybe. Nah, not that. I wouldn't say that. Now I do want to show one thing here. Yeah, sure. Kind of like for display purposes. You can put the Goblin King on here. 
and uh, well, actually, he kind of like leaps up from the abyss. Yeah, it's I, really weird. I oh, I showed up yes, I for those of you who have seen the Goblin King's yeah. Battle reversed on my channel. Oh. I was showing Little Brico Nine up. <laughs> reverse. Yes. I showed you that. Not this. Um, not that, but I actually showed Bill Brick 09 a video of the Goblin King, um, coming from the <laughs> abyss in reverse, so he, so he basically just jumps down, yes. and then magically, <laughs> the stuff goes back together. Yes. Yes. That's I will, funny. if I can, I will release that on YouTube, because that is so funny. Now, this is probably one of like the cheesiest moments in the film. Yeah. <laughs> the Goblin King leaps up from nowhere, yeah. and he's like... I'm back, I'm gonna kill you all. Yeah. And then Gandalf just kinda takes a couple swipes at him, slices yeah, open do it. <laughs> his belly. His <laughs> beard. Yeah, and then he slices his quadruple his chin. Beard. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Goblin King nods and says, That'll do it. That'll and do then, it. then he falls over and boom. No, he doesn't fall over. Yeah, it does. He falls forward, but he doesn't break the thing. First, all the dwarves go down, and then he falls on top of them. Oh, yeah. that's right. All the dwarves fall into the abyss. But you can't do that without every single dwarf. And then, boom! Well, okay. that isn't so, bad. For a comparison of all these guys. You can see the Black Gate Tower there, too, to compare. Black Gate! <laughs> The Black Gate is how Oh gosh! <laughs> that, that <laughs> goblin. A handless goblin <laughs> king. Oh! That's oh, so yeah. <laughs> We're doing a randomness already? Yes, oh gosh, I think I know what he's gonna do. King Kong! <laughs> oh gosh! Actually, someone already did that idea with the end. Oh well, King Kong is better with the Goblin King because he's smaller. <laughs> the ant is too. Yeah, true. I'll get that later. I killed Gandalf and the eagle. <laughs> you killed Gwey here. Gwey here the wind lord. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, we'll be now they won't say. Oh, but that's a tale for another <laughs> set. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Um, anyway, uh, I want to show this with all the members of the traveling company. Oh, so we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so here's Goblin Town with all uh, 13 dwarves and Gandalf versus four goblins, but one is in his bucket and the other is dead. <laughs> so it's not really much of a fight. <laughs> so you'll definitely want to get a lot more goblins if you want to make a display like this. But it already looks pretty good. I mean, there's definitely enough space for all of them. Yes. Unlike some of the other sets. <laughs> like <laughs> which one? <laughs> Attack of the works. Yeah, that was oh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Putting them all in one tree. That was <laughs> terrible. Only one person is able. No. <laughs> Only one person falls. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you can see that there. For building tips, I mean, this is kind of like a starter for a very large idea <coughs> if you feel like taking up the challenge which if allows you feel like mimicking all this then you can make an actual god <coughs> uh, which would be very nice yes or, well very disgusting yeah true very yeah. disgusting anyway um not much else for building tips so we'll go ahead and get to the ratings since i built this one i'll rate build andrew you can rate play uh, and okay. Feanor, is that okay? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And Feanor will rate display. I guess I could do play better than the display. Do you want to do build? I, I would rather. Okay. Because All right. I, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and start with the build then. Okay, so buildability. Um, I would say. Do you think eight or seven? Is good. Um, or? I'd probably go with the seven. Mm. Yeah, yeah, seven because yeah. Because um, I would give it. I probably would have given like like a nine if all those were yeah. printed. Yeah. And if they had all been able to be connected, I would have given it a ten. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh no, maybe. Yeah. That that that's where yeah. you that's where you don't want to really get into a big debate because some people, like younger kids, would say, but it's better this way because now instead of having it this way, I can have it like this. Where but you could also disconnect. Drop. 
What if you connected it, disconnected them all, though? <coughs> yes, but it would be very difficult because then you would have to have, uh, like, things here at an angle. Oh, true. And well, even an then, angle. I wouldn't give it a 10. You ne For my viewers, you know me. I never, not even the power of Orthoc, did I give it a 10. I never give anything a 10. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess a uh, fan was right about the controversy there. So, so just be careful on that. I, that's just right. what I'm saying. But uh, for what it is right now, we'll give it to 7. So, Andrew, you go ahead and rate um, playability. I already, oh, that's right. You gave that rate. That's right. I thought we already it's did my that. Turn. <laughs> it's my turn. Okay. Uh, for playability, this one's going to be pretty high because... Um, this is up there with the Mines of Moria as far wow. as amount of functions. Yeah, you get the ladder, the bridge, the Goblin Scribe's little area there. We get the treasure, we get a catapult, we get uh, the trap, and then it's all be uh, able to disconnect. So you could, and the wheel, but I don't know. So I would say anywhere between five and seven functions. That is really a high. So it's somewhere between a nine and a ten for me. Um, what do you guys think? Nine or ten? I. I know you think. Nine. What do you think, Feanor? Nine or ten? For playability, I would give it a nine point five. Yeah, nine point five. Yeah, that sounds good. Don't, don't really like the decimals, but we'll do that for this one. So nine point five for playability, and finally, Feanor will give us the display value. This one is actually. Different than the rest. This one is a lot like Minds of Moria because you can have it in so many different ways. True. So, <coughs> this one I'm going to give a nine. nine. I think that if it had been connected, it would have been contending for ten. I, I do not yeah. know that it would have gotten ten, but it would be contending definitely because yeah. there would be a set one. But. For overall displayability, it's a nine. Yeah, I um, I really, but basically the only thing I didn't like about this set was that they weren't connected because it's very hard to, very hard to shove them all onto my bookshelf with having to do it, having like four different yeah. things to carry at one time. Mm. All right, well this has been a pretty long review. It's probably been close to an hour, but uh. Anyway, this is the Goblin King Battle Review. I'll get this up here soon, uh, along with Riddles for the Ring. And then in January of 2014, we will be getting the new Hobbit Desolation of Smaug reviews on here. Yes! And since there's only four, as far as we know, we'll probably do all of those with both of our guest stars, because those are the best reviews, because we all like having three opinions. So thanks for tuning in. Check out other Hobbits and Lord of the Rings and other stuff. And she falls for the Lego. And my channel. Yes, Andrew Nights and Andrew Three's channel. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And there's just one more thing to add. Nazi, giant Nazi fallen Nagate attacking a miniature uh, minister. <laughs> dun, dun, dun.